all the gringazy gringos. Welcome to Gringos R Us. Expats with a plan. This one is going to be fun. It's all about what can go wrong as a digital nomad. Coming up after this. And welcome back. Well, as we just said, this is about what can go wrong when you are a digital nomad. Oh, yeah. So let me preface this with my current situation. I am not old enough yet to retire. And so that means that the only income we would have if I was not working is Mark's social security check. And while it may be possible to get by on the skinny, on that social security check, we don't have long-term rental options because of our nomadic lifestyle. And we have to rely on Airbnb, which can be quite expensive. Yeah. So I got a job. I'm a digital nomad. Here's the situation though. Oh, before you get in a situation, this is so bad. I need two. He needs two. Okay, I'm now not, you can tell. I'm not telling you what I need. I didn't say what you needed. I took a shower just so I could feel better and rub myself down with lavender oil. I'm stressed out right now. Okay. I have to assume blame and responsibility for the situation that I got myself into. So let's just put that out there right now. My employer doesn't know I'm in Mexico. And the reason they don't know I'm in Mexico is because this job was too good to pass up. It paid very, very well. It allowed us to pay off all of our debt mm -hmm. and start banking mm -hmm. some of the money so that during the periods when I don't have a contract, we could live on that. Well. And, and for five months, it operated like a breeze. It really did. In fact, so well that the manager of the company that I was contracted out to actually has told me that he wants to request that I be held longer because he's appreciative of the quality of work that I do. No shock there. I do good work. Yes, she does. My stumbling block is getting someone to allow me to do that work outside of the United States. And it's interesting because there are people on my team that are working remotely from Canada. And it's a US company. So I'm not really sure what the big deal is, but here's the issue. I was not honest. I was not honest with them about where I am. And when I went to get the laptop that they give to me, and when I went to do my pre-employment drug screen, blood work and things like that, I paid for a last minute $1,500 airline ticket out of our bank account, flew to Kansas City, did what I needed to do, got the laptop that was shipped to me and brought it back. And made my mama happy. And your mom was happy. Yeah. And I was happy to see mama. So Monday, literally this past Monday, that laptop stopped charging and I worked until the juice was gone. I got about three and a half hours in on Monday morning and I tried everything I could. I reset the battery. I opened up the back of the laptop and made sure that there wasn't anything loose with the charge port. Uh, I tried different cables. It didn't matter. It wasn't getting charged anymore. It was dead. And when it got down to about 4%, it kicked me off and I can't even get it. I couldn't even get it rebooted to, to try to even pull anything important that I needed. And let's see, what are some of the important things that I could have needed? How about the OneNote file that's kept on the cloud where all of my important notes are, everything that I've learned during this job on, on how to resolve issues and tickets for clients, all of that. I don't know 
So anyway, I'm frustrated right now. And again, the fault lies in me. But then I also didn't think that I would get a loaner laptop from this company that was going to be dead in less than six months. So here's where the trouble comes in. I FedExed that laptop to his mom so that she could send it back to the company. The company, in turn, sent a new laptop as a replacement to, also to my mom. I asked them to. And then I asked my mom to then send it to me in San Luis Potosí. That is a huge mistake. Uh -huh. Do not ever, do not ever try to send a laptop into Mexican customs, ever. So essentially, well, a part of the part of the blame on this also goes to FedEx because when my mom took the laptop to FedEx, they said to her that almost everything they ship to Mexico ends up getting returned. Now, you would think that a company the size of FedEx would know the paperwork that would be needed to accompany anything that is shipped to a foreign country, right. regardless of what country, if they all are going to have different, you know, bills of lading or requirements to meet customs, you would think that they would have that in place. They just went, well, everything we ship comes back returned. Red flag number one that we did not pay attention to. I did pay attention to that and almost had second thoughts. I called her right back while she was standing at the FedEx because I was considering just buying an airline ticket and flying out to Kansas City and just getting it and bringing it in with my luggage like we did before. And at the time that I called her back, she hadn't paid for the shipment yet. The gentleman she was working with said something, and I can't remember what it is right now, but it sounded better than what he was previously saying. That's my mistake. Yeah. I should have just gone with my gut and just bought another 1500 freaking dollar airline ticket and flew to Kansas City to get this laptop and then back again. I would have been working by now. But no, I didn't do that. Okay, so. The laptop that she sends to me ends up in Guadalajara at the airport and it's sitting in customs two days ago and it's not being released. I call FedEx. Here's another FedEx issue. Can you please tell me why it's sitting in customs? He tells me on the phone that I need to hire a customs broker. So now I'm in a panic. Our Spanish is not adequate enough to negotiate this process. Not even close. Fortunately, we have four bilingual friends and all four of them have been trying to help me for two days. Thank you. Thank you. I'll just, right now, Lise, Romy, Annie, and Arlene, thank you. So, as it turns out, we find out this morning, or actually it was last night. Last night. Yesterday afternoon. It was in the afternoon. Late in the afternoon. Uh, I believe it was Arlene who called and found out that she spoke to FedEx, and the woman she spoke with said they had no idea why I was told that I needed a broker. That is not what the issue was. The issue was is that I needed a commercial invoice. Now, mind you, I'm not a business. My mother-in-law is not a business. This is not a brand new laptop. This is a work laptop. Commercial invoice? Okay, whatever. We'll get it worked out. Remember that term, not a new not laptop. Not a new. So commercial invoice gets done. I had an email that it could get forwarded to. It was sent immediately. They had it before 6 o'clock. No change. I was up till 1 a.m. last night. No change. Um, this morning, uh, both Romy and Lise, and, uh, or maybe it was just Romy today, whatever, and Arlene 
We're all making phone calls to me, again, trying to figure out what's the holdup now. It was agreed that they got the form they needed, and that was fine. Now we have a bigger issue. Now they want a receipt showing the actual value of this laptop. Again, it's a used laptop, not purchased, on loan to me, so I can do this job because it's what my employer requires, is that I use their laptop. With their software. With their software, their security, all, you know. It, it's basically what you would expect if you were doing work for an IT company. They generally will provide you the materials that you need. So, further complications. I have an email now, both, both Arlene and I think it was Lee's. Lee's gave me the exact same email for the exact same person. I emailed that person, not a response at all. I explained the entire situation with Google Translate as much as I could in an email about how I need this laptop. Because if I don't get this laptop by Monday, I probably don't have a job. Now to further complicate things, Monday is a holiday here in Mexico. It is Mexican Labor Day. Which we didn't know. We had no way of knowing. So this is a three-day holiday weekend for everybody in Mexico. That doesn't help our situation. No. One iota. No. So the absolute earliest that anything is going to be done at this point in time now is Tuesday. I have not worked since this past Monday. The laptop that they shipped was signed for, well, really wasn't signed for, but was Checked delivered deli delivered to my mother-in-law Tuesday night. So they know it was delivered. And I don't have any way out of this. This is what happens when you lie. It catches up with you. Oh, what a tangled web we weave. Yeah, I know. And, and if the laptop hadn't broke, none of this would even matter. Nope. None of this would have mattered. My job was being done well. My taxes, my Social Security, my Medicare, all that was being paid to the right people. I, I don't necessarily understand why there is such a restriction on people working wherever when you're a 100% virtual remote employee, but this is the situation I'm in. I'm not going to have a job. Maybe I will. Maybe if they think I'm a really good employee, maybe they'll let me keep my job. But I'm going to have to have that conversation, which I do not want to have, but I'm going to have to. How else can I possibly explain why I still don't have this laptop? And furthermore, I've got a bigger issue now. Their laptop is stuck in customs in Guadalajara we have three options. Option number one is we pay a customs broker $1,500 and they may get it for us. Maybe. May. The biggest issue there is because it's a used laptop, it has software on it, and the Mexican government is very leery of importing laptops that have that type, any type of, of software on it because they don't know what it's going to be used for <clears throat> and i get that option number two is have it shipped back to the united states and returned which of course i would have to pay for yes now keep this in mind i've already fedex one laptop back to the united states and i am paying for the shipment of the laptop that got sent here i would also have to pay the import fees if they do release it but now option two is to turn right back around and pay to have it shipped right back to my mother-in-law. Yes, and then option three is just... Let it go. Let it go, which we can't we do. We can't do. If we let it go, what happens is the SAT, which is the Mexican IRS, keeps it. Seizure. As seizure is unclaimed or whatever, but... It's not our laptop to give away. But it's not my laptop. It belongs to the company I work for and I would then owe them the amount of money up to $4,000 for this laptop. 
plane tickets looking cheaper. So if I had only just paid $1,500 and got on a plane, oh, I don't know, Tuesday, I would have had the laptop and been back already. It would have been expensive. I thought, very naively, I suppose, I thought that it would cost less to have it shipped here. So, yeah. So we have a situation where one, if I had been honest about where I worked, I may or may not have had a job in the first place to be worrying about, but I needed the job and I was working remotely. And in my opinion, where I worked from, as long as I did a good job, should have made no difference. And they were very happy with what you were And they were very doing. happy with my work. Yes. However, I have lied to them about where I have been. And now I have to come clean and I don't see a good way out no matter what. I'm either going to have to tell them the truth and say, look, this is where I am. Um, this is where I've been the entire time. If you do not want to keep me as an employee, I understand. But if you think I've been doing a good job, I can continue to do so. And I'll drive and, to the airport. And, and, I will, and I will fly back on my own dime and retrieve the laptop and bring it with me through the airport, which is pretty much how I'm being told it needs to be done. That's pretty much the only option I have. Because if I, I can't continue to stall and, and explain no. why I don't have this laptop. Especially when we don't have a way of getting the laptop no. other than I mean, I was returning to the States. We were, willing, we were willing to drive all the way to Guadalajara from San Luis Potosí. It's about a four, a little over a four hour drive. But then we found out they wouldn't let us in anyway because where it's being kept is employees only and they, they don't allow people to come in and pick things up. So that would have been a wasted trip. Well, number two is according to the way that they operate in um, Mexico with FedEx is they are required to deliver it to the address that we put to have them and we actually had them ship it to the FedEx store and we were going to go get that. Right, you know, because we weren't sure how things get delivered where we're at right now. So I asked if we could have it delivered to that FedEx store, which they said, yeah. And we saw somebody picking up tires. tires. There was somebody picking up four rubber tires right there at the FedEx, so we knew that they did that. So that was the plan, but the plan has been foiled. And right now, I still don't know what I have to do to tell them to just send it back. No, we won't be able to do that probably until Tuesday. And that won't happen until Tuesday, right? So let's say that I can get through to them on Tuesday and I can tell them to send it back. It takes two days. At least. Two days, because then it's got to clear customs on, in the United States. That means that I could possibly get an airline ticket for Thursday, maybe be back by next weekend. But the thing is, do I have a job? Uh, we got some money in the bank and we need to hold on to that money. If I don't have a job, we need to hold on to what we have and not be throwing $1,500 out frivolously on an airline ticket for a lost cause. No, and, and I mean, if, if there is no job, then it's just ship it back to the United States and have it returned. Yep. And then start looking for a job Another number job. two. And you know, here's the thing. If you are a digital nomad, if you're thinking of working in another country, any other country, there is a preference for you to be an independent contractor or a 1099 employee. That apparently is the preference, which means that you also have to pay your own income tax, your own social security payments and things like that. I don't know why that is giving, given more leeway than a W-2. And to further confuse me on why this is an issue, our legal state of residence is South Dakota. That is where our, my tax is being held and reported for. I mean, although South Dakota doesn't have state tax, but... But that's the official state of record. But that's the record. official state of record. That's where we live in the United States. So, 
I have a legal U.S. address. I a am able to work. I am a U.S. citizen, uh, all these things. And I have the experience and I have the talent and I'm being recognized for it. But a lot of people do not want their W-2 employees to be working outside of the U.S. And 1099 work has not been easy to find. Um, I have brought it up with recruiters. And although they'll say we can do 1099 or W-2, they often will say, but we prefer to do W-2. I don't know. I don't know the legalities around it. The only thing I can tell you in my naivete huh. is that I thought I could pull this off. And I would have if the computer hadn't broken. Uh-huh. So the lesson is if you have any type of malfunction with hardware that is supplied to you, make any exchanges back on the other side of the border. Do it in the United if you States. Have, if you have to get a, a cheap flight to Houston or Dallas or someplace like that um, and put yourself up in a hotel for a couple of days and yep. have them ship it to the hotel, yep. do it. I mean, and this isn't even about how much more expensive electronics are in Mexico. and not, No, it's none of that. It's the fact that their importing laws are such that this is an issue. It's an issue. And if you have a laptop, they allow you to carry it in your luggage, one laptop. And then you have to pay import fees if you bring in more than one laptop. And you're going to pay it on the more expensive laptop. Yeah. So we We've know had that's another true. Another YouTuber has already tried that and thought they were going to get away and right. pay on the cheap one, and no, they made them pay on the expensive one. Right. So that's what I did last time. I flew back. I got this laptop. I came. I came back to Querétaro with the, the laptop. Took her empty. Yeah. Laptop bag and put in the bag and yeah. went right through customs and everything was hunky dory. Yeah, they don't care. If you're carrying it as a traveler, the issue is when you're trying to import. Sh import it and ship it into the country. And apparently computers is something that is looked at very, very closely. Oh, Lord. This has been a nightmare. Like, I got, guys, I cannot even tell you how much stress this has caused me this week. Suddenly a $1,500 airline ticket. Looks cheap. Looks cheap. Because if you think about how much I had to spend to send the old one back, spend to send the new one here, spend again to return this one there, and, hopefully, and, and hope, when that happens, I don't know. And hopefully still be able to fly up there and pick it up So because that means she has a job. If I have a job. If I don't have a job, I'm not going to spend the money. That's why I have to have this, I have to have this talk now that I did not want to have. And... I'm not a dishonest person typically, and it shames me. I, I do feel shame that I have to have this talk with my employer because I have been basically blowing smoke about where we are. You know, we're in a, we're in a Winnebago. You know, we're, we're RVing it. We have a solid black Winnebago. Can't you see it behind us? No, it's, it's been... A tough week, and it's going to put a lot of stress into a situation because if we don't have a job, then she's got to start looking for a job. And do we play the same game? Do we be forthright on this one? Those are all decisions we're going to, going to have to be made. I mean, I'm just saying it's hard. It's hard to find someone who wants to let you work outside of the United States. It's not easy. Um, you're more likely to find a 1099 job like that because you are an independent contractor and they're just hiring you for your work. But when it comes to this loaning you out a laptop business and making you a W-2 and everything else, that's that's an issue. And and The W-2 part wasn't I don't so get, much of an issue because realistically, that is our address. So there wasn't. But most W-2 people don't want you outside of the U.S. I, get I don't that. understand why. 
And the other thing about this is that, you know, I've been trying really hard to do a really good job and to be able to put on a resume that I did contracting work because that opens more doors. I cannot tell you how many inquiries I've had over the last three weeks because my contract terminates at the end of May or maybe sooner at this point. But because it was coming up at the end of May, I was getting a lot of people uh, contacting me. And I've been getting some really nice numbers thrown at me. And I feel like that, that can all be jeopardized, honestly. If I was to say I'm in Mexico, I feel like it's jeopardized. Could be. I just, hey. I did ask one person if I could be 1099, and they basically said they, they do 1099 for their short term, but for their longer term, they'd like to do W-2. And there lies the quandary yeah. of, <clears throat> does she want to do short term work, or do we want to do six, nine, 12 month contracts? I mean, short term's fine with me. I don't care. I'm good with it. Look, is anybody out there need someone who has 30 years of laboratory experience and seven years of laboratory information systems experience, specifically with Cerner PathNet GenLab and two years of Cerner RadNet support and build. I'm available. Call her, not me. Call me. Yeah. I've been doing this for a long time and I'm very good at what I do. She is. The problem is I'm having a hard time convincing other people that Mexico is okay. And to, <laughs> be, and to be fair, I already looked up the, the larger corporate policies regarding countries that are considered high risk and Mexico is nowhere on that list. Shouldn't be. I looked. I looked just in case this would ever come up. But I don't work specifically for that company. I'm contracted to them. It's the company that I work for that had question about me working outside of the country. And that's the situation I'm in. I know we talked long enough about this. Um, this is pretty much why there was no video drop on time on Thursday or Friday Saturday. or Saturday. It's because I've been struggling all week long with customs and FedEx and trying to do this in Spanish when we just don't have that skill set to try to get my laptop so I can work again. And um, I don't know right now when I'm going to work again, if I'm going to work again. I have no idea. Uh, does that mean we're going to leave the country? Well, no. No. I mean, I guess eventually I'll find something, even if it doesn't pay what this pays. But this pays really well. And see, the reason that that's important to me is because when you're a contractor, sometimes you work, and then sometimes you don't work. And this job has allowed us to pay off all of our debt with regard, well, well everything except for my student loan debt. And, but then, and the other part of that is, is it allowed us to pay off the debt, and we have already prepaid yeah. for six months of our housing. So our, our housing's pretty much covered through the end of the year. So And we banked some, some money. Um, not a lot, but some. It would have been a lot if, I, if my computer hadn't died. Uh, but basically, no, we don't plan on leaving. We're going to stay. We're going to work this out. I just Well, somehow. I think the, the one thing we can say that this did teach us is that Honesty is the best policy? Well, not, not, not only that, but re with regards to being in Mexico, we had people... Bend we, over backwards to help us. We had people that honestly have gone above and beyond what friendship requires. I mean, it has just proven to us that we made the right decision to move here. We did. Now we've got to find a job so we can stay here. Right. That's the goal. That's the goal. x pass with a plan. <laughs> <laughs> we just don't know what the hell the plan right is now right now. Right now there is no plan. 
Oh, Lord, another curveball. But I'm not, look, I'm not blaming the Mexican government. I'm not blaming FedEx, at least not entirely. A little bit. I'm not blaming anyone. This situation was created by me. I know this. I don't deny it. So the, the lesson here really is, if you're gonna be a digital nomad and you're using someone else's equipment on this particular assignment, yep. if something happens, go to the States to get your replacement. <laughs> Either be up front with them in the first place and tell them where you are. And you're still gonna end up going to the States because you're not right. gonna be able to get them to ship you but, but, the necessary equipment, so. But it's cheaper for you and less stressful for you to literally buy that last minute, jacked up, hiked up airline ticket. Yep. And just go back to the United States and do your swap and then come back to Mexico. And if there's any clothing or things like shoes or something that you have a hard time getting down here, you can pick them up while you're there. I mean, I'm just true. Make it the best of it. But and, I'm and telling if, you. before anyone asks, was this was this a drive we could have done? I mean, it would have taken us days. It would have been it would have been a hard from San Luis Potosi. It would have taken four days each direction. I mean, that, that's just and it still wouldn't have gotten. And, and, and realistically. We probably would have ended up spending about the same amount of money. And more time. And more time. And I still wouldn't have been working yet. No. Okay, well, I know this isn't a happy-go-lucky, but hey, this is real life, and this is us in Mexico, and you need to know this. I wanted to share it with you guys as a lesson learned. Yeah, it's my fault. Don't make the same mistake I made. Just don't even do it. If you can find a way to be upfront and, and still be able to get employment and let them know that you're in Mexico, that's the best way to do it. If you can't. If you can't, then. Go to the other side of the border to get any swap out of right. all equipment. Right, right. Because it isn't gonna happen here. You can't ship it here. Nope. You're gonna run into a brick wall and a lot more expenses and stress, a lot more stress. Even if you can speak the language well enough, you still get stonewalled. Yeah. All right. Well, there's our lovely video for Sunday. Um, I don't know if I'll have a job next week. I guess that'll have to be an update at a later time. Yeah. <laughs> so thank we'll let you. you know how it comes out. <laughs> oh, I, I can't believe I can even laugh at this moment. <laughs> well, it's either laugh or cry. And it's a whole uh, hell of a lot I've been easier. very close to the cry a few times already. Well, all right, guys, thanks for tuning in. We do appreciate you very much. Yes. Um, I want to say thank you personally to Cynthia. You know who you are. We have now twice received some very generous donations through PayPal from Cynthia. More than I ever expected, um, simply because she liked the content in our videos and found them helpful. So thank you very much, Cynthia. It was greatly appreciated, and even more so now. <laughs> and also, thank you, Annie Vett, Arlene, yes. Lise, and Romy, our dear, dear friends. For sure. Who have just meant the world to us before this occurred, and now, I'm even sure. more so. You're going to make me cry. Um, okay, so... Thanks, guys. Um, we'll keep you updated. Yep. Um, and we are Gringos R Us. Expats with the plan? Kind of. Maybe. Well, remember, we're doing, doing it. it. You, you can, can too. too. Although you might want to do it a little better than we have been lately. Well, if we can show you what not to do. And if you want to watch any other videos, they're coming up next. Hasta la próxima vez. Adios.